Here's one of the fastest ways to do VLOOKUP, and if you thought the title was clickbait, here. Hey everyone, Consulting Humor here, and today I'm going to show you the fastest and easiest way to do VLOOKUPs from start to finish. The structure of this video is split into five main sections, preceded by a short preface and ending with some general tips and troubleshooting. In the interest of not wasting anyone's time, each of the main sections are labeled with timestamps, so feel free to jump into the section that you feel is the most relevant for you. So here's the breakdown. In the first section, we'll take a look at what VLOOKUP does and introduce a real-life example of when you might want to use VLOOKUP. In the second section, we'll take a look at the setup process. In the third, we'll go through how to use the formula. Then we'll check the table for basic errors and finally wrap up with some general tips and common VLOOKUP troubleshooting. So before we begin, I just wanted to mention a few things. While this video is meant for beginners, the actual audience will probably range anywhere from keyboard-only Excel wizards all the way down to people who lied about their Excel proficiency on their resumes. As for the nitpicky among you, yes, I am acutely aware there are more robust solutions than VLOOKUP, but the title of the video is How to Do VLOOKUP, so consider this before hurting my feelings with your scathing comments. Secondly, this video is designed to get people up and running with VLOOKUP as quickly as possible, so I won't be going into extreme technical detail about each mechanic. And lastly, but perhaps most importantly, this isn't the only way to do VLOOKUP. This is just me sharing how I've been doing VLOOKUPs for years, and I think it's a good balance between speed and keeping things well organized. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter how you do it as long as it works, and if you feel comfortable doing it some other way, then that's fine too. So with that out of the way, let's get started. So what is VLOOKUP? Hmm. Let's see. VLOOKUP, or Vertical Lookup, is a Microsoft Excel function that searches for a value in a table and returns a related value from a different column in the same row. For those of you learning VLOOKUP for the first time, that sentence probably was not very helpful. Instead, I think looking at an example will help visualize how this works, so let's get into it. So here I have the results of my global compensation survey, which has each respondent's country. Now what I want to do here is assign each country to its general region, which is where VLOOKUP comes in. To set up VLOOKUP, we need two tables. The first table will simply be our source data table with the countries, and the second table is what we're going to use to pull in the region, which I'm going to refer to as our lookup table. If the country in our source data table matches a country in the lookup table, VLOOKUP will pull the data from another column in the lookup table into our source data table. At this point, it's easier just to do an example than explain any further, so let's jump right in. The first step is to table up your data. Right now, the data are just values, referred to as a range. Tabling your data does a few things, but for the purposes of this video, tabling up your data allows you to name the table, and this will come into play very soon. To table your data, press Ctrl T with any cell inside your table highlighted. Excel is pretty good about selecting your entire data set, but you should always check the borders of your table, which is easy because Excel by default changes the color of everything it just tabled. Also notice that when you create a table and you have any cell in the table highlighted, a new tab appears at the top. If you click that tab, you'll see a box at the very left where you can change the table's name. In this case, table five. You can name the table whatever you want, but I tend to try and pick names that don't share the names of any Excel formulas, but it doesn't really matter. The next thing we'll do is create a new column at the far right of our table. I'm gonna call this column lookup region. And when I press enter, Excel is gonna create a new table column by default. I like to highlight the column header and sometimes the entire column a different color, which tells me that this is something I made and wasn't a part of the original source data, but it's not necessary, but it's nice to keep track. I generally make it a point not to edit the source data in any way. Okay, so let's jump over to the second component of VLOOKUP, the lookup table. You can make the table yourself, but for reasonably common data sets, tables usually exist on the internet. For our example, I just did a quick Google search and grabbed the table from GitHub and copied it into a new tab. Once you have your lookup table, we're gonna once again table up the data. And I'm gonna go ahead and name this table region. Here, we wanna make sure that the countries are in the leftmost column. Think of this column as column one and the next column is column two, then three, and so on. The region data we wanna pull is in the sixth column. Remember that, we're gonna use that in a second. A little tip here is that instead of having the columns A, B, C, and so on, you can go into the options, click formulas, then check the box that says R1, C1 reference style. And now the columns will be numbered, which is especially helpful when you have a ton of columns. 
And with that, the setup is complete. And if this is your first introduction to VLOOKUP, this might have seemed like a lot, but really all we did was create and name two tables. Really, not too bad at all. Okay, now let's move on to the formula. The VLOOKUP formula is actually very simple to execute now that both our source data table and our lookup table are tabled up and named. Our goal is to try to take the country, which is in our source data, and assign it to a region to help us do some high-level data analysis. We'll be typing our formula into the first row of the column lookup region that we created earlier. The formula goes equals VLOOKUP, and you can press tab to autocomplete the formula once you highlight it. And the first thing it asks you is, what data are you trying to look up? And that comes from this table. And we do this by clicking the country on the same row our formula is in. The second thing it asks us is where we want to pull the data from. And since we named our lookup table region, we can just start typing region and highlight it and press tab and it will autocomplete. Notice our table has an icon next to it. So if it happens to also be the name of a formula in Excel, this is how you would tell the difference. Next thing our formula asks us is which column is the data in that we want to pull into this table. And you can see here that the region data we want is in column six. And lastly, for this kind of view lookup, we want an exact match of the country names. For exact matches, we always want to select false. This video won't cover approximate matches. And now we press enter and boom, there you have it. Again, if this is your first time doing this, it might seem like a lot, but once you do it a few times, it only takes a few seconds. In fact, we can do it again and pull in a subregion, which is in column seven of our lookup table. And boom, easy peasy. Okay, so with that out of the way, the last thing we do is to check our data for errors, which we'll cover in the next section. The last thing we need to do is check our lookup results for errors. The quickest way to do this is to use the filter at the top of our lookup region column and sort A to Z first and take a look at what we have. So here we can see that we have a bunch of NAs, and this means that something in our country name didn't match exactly with the lookup table's country name, which should be pretty easy to resolve. A simple solution here is to copy the name of a country from our source data table that doesn't have a match and replace it in the lookup table. You could also do this in reverse, but like I said before, I don't like altering the source data. Once these match exactly, you can see the region gets pulled in automatically. And now with all the NAs removed, I have a broad region group to run pivot tables with, allowing me to perform that high level analysis to look at global compensation patterns. To wrap this video up, I wanted to quickly go through some general tips in troubleshooting. First, tabling data helps maintain the fidelity of your data, but also drastically increases the size of your file. Executing calculation intensive formulas may result in hangups. If you're working with excessively large data sets, consider using SQL or Microsoft Access or something with more robust features than Excel. Another tip is if you find your VLOOKUP returning all NAs, even though the values in your source table and your lookup table look the same, there might be some formatting mismatches or hidden spaces. So check the formatting or use the equals trim function to remove any hidden spaces. I find it helpful to maintain consistency, especially in labeling convention and naming your tables. So you know exactly what you're looking at when you come back to the table later. This also extends to taking advantage of colors and formatting. Also, a compulsive habit I've developed over the years is pressing Control shift l twice to make sure my table filters are cleared before moving on to the next activity. And lastly, it's common practice to paste all client-facing data tables and graphs into your deliverables as images or just PDF the entire file. Do this until they get frustrated enough to ask for your source data calculations, or better yet, just give up on trying to figure out how you got your numbers and just roll with it. I could go on all day, but I want to end the video here. My closing thoughts are once again that there are more ways to do and use VLOOKUP. And at the end of the day, whichever way is most comfortable with you is fine, as long as it works. But if you happen to do things differently, please comment below. Until next time, this is Consulting Humor wishing you well in all your personal and professional endeavors.